Hi hey, Audrey, in this video we're going to be working on the uh, Honda CBR 1000F landfill bike project. Yes, we've got our new welding wire, so we will be finishing off the rack. And then there is a plethora of other things to do. Okay then, let's get our uh, supporting parts cleaned up and into bare metal, so we can weld them into place. Boom boom. Okay, so I've measured this gap out, cut it in half, so that's in the middle. Uh, took the measurement to this piece of wood, cut that off there, and then that should fit in there like that, so I can push that up to it, push that along there, put it back up, and then if I move that to the other side, should be just about exactly the same. So when I hold it in place, it'll be in the middle. Well that's my theory anyway. So one, two, three. Okay then, so that's that all welded up. Next job, get it primed. Okay then, so there it is. All primed up. Right then, there it is, in black. Okay then, so that's the rack. All finished in clear lacquer. I've also totally finished the swing arm. All in clear lacquer. Uh, still got to lacquer the frame. Still got to lacquer the tank, but but at the moment I'm in the other shed, so let's go back there. Okay, so now I'm going to start on the uh, rear shock linkage and the rear shock. I'm going to clean them up and uh, paint them, obviously. And I will keep coming back to you in different stages of the progress. So see you in a bit. Okay, so there they are all cleaned up. to get all the red paint off the shocker to spring. So to grease that, must take must can tape it all up inside and uh, paint it. But first but before I do all that the next time you see these well not that these they'll be in grey primer. Now I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look like grey primer, so obviously you've missed a bit, so make sure you rewind the video quick. Nah, not really. I've just uh, jumped the gun a little bit and got carried away and uh, that's where I got up to. Oops, looks like we've jumped the gun again. Okay, so now I've got the uh, side panels done, we can move on to the clocks on the cockpit. Okay then, so that's all the clocks all painted up and lacquered. Now I've just got to put them all back together, but before I do that, I'm going to check all the bulbs to make sure they're all working. Okay then, so I've got my battery charger set up with a couple of nails. Uh, one stuck into the earth wire at the back. Uh, let me turn the light off. We might get a better effect. There we go. Right, let's try again. If I touch that one on the side. I don't know if you can see that, but the uh, clocks are lighting up. Let me just take that face off. 
Yeah, you want to keep on this seat. So all the dashboard lights are working. So next we can work out the instrument lights. That's that indicator. That's that indicator. Uh, what's that one? That's the I beam. Uh, that's the oil light. And uh, that's the neutral light. That'll do for me. All the bulbs tested. Can't really test the uh, dials because they work on the sensors, I think. So. Let's get them all back together. you will agree with me they look perfectly splendid wicked what next Next day. But today we're going to be using this and this and one of these. This one is steel, so no, I'm not going to use that one. No, I'm going to be using this one. This one is brass, and these are the rear shock mounting bolts and bushes for all the linkages. Basically, all I'm going to do is clean all the bolts up, clean all the nuts up, heat them up to temperature and then 
put some beeswax on them because I'm fed up with nuts and bolts rusting. And according to a big man called Craig, they'll never rust again with that one. Uh, with the XJ I did try uh, eating these up to cherry red and then dipping them in burnt black oil. But uh, that was supposed to stop them rusting, but it didn't. They still rusted. So hopefully this method really works. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So that's all our bolts wire brushed up and cleaned up. So now let's go and put our blowtorch on and uh, wax our nuts. Right then, I think I'll start with the bolt end, just eat it up. Doesn't have to be too hot, I don't think, just not enough to melt the wax. Uh, just uh, test it by putting the wax on it to see if it melts. And it does melt pretty well. So you think you've got enough on there? A little wire brush and work it in and apparently if you use a steel brush it will have a steel colour but if you use a copper brush which I'm using it should have a copper finish just rub it in it doesn't really look like it's got a copper colour to me but uh, I don't know. I'll do all the bolt heads first and then uh, that'll give the chance to, for the nuts to cool. That'll give them a chance to cool down and then I can do the nuts. So be with me while I carry on doing this and I'll be back with you in a bit. Right then, let's uh, put this back together the best we can. Here's all my uh, bolts, just get them a little buff up, and they've all got beeswax on. So, one way of waxing your nuts, I suppose. Uh, <clears throat> looking at the manual, this goes first, pointing that way, that. Put it that way. That just goes in there. And all the bolts on that diagram are going through from that side. I turn that over. I'm not going to put any grease or anything on them yet. I'm just going to do this for storage. So that should just go through there. Nut on there. I was going to attach it to the swing arm. Yeah, that looks brilliant, doesn't it? If I do say myself. But I'm not going to bother attaching it to there because things will just get scratched and uh, it'll be too heavy. So that goes on there. Uh, I think that goes on there. I'll have to put the uh, appropriate uh, what they call bush 
appropriate bush in there, uh, which is the uh, appropriate bolt. See that one? Yep. Turn that over to there. to the frame, doesn't it? So, can't really do anything with that. Uh, that bush must go in there. So this nut and bolt must go through there. Careful though, I don't scratch anything. Then that bush is going there. Let's put that on there. <laughs> and then this bolt from the same way. There was some uh, shim on this, but they were trapped in there, sort of thing. Well, you got three. I don't know if there was four. Down there, put that through there, whack that on there, there we go, job done, don't start scratching stuff. Good, if I do say myself. Whoop. So, I'm going to put this in storage till we're ready to fit it. That's it, job done. Okay then, before I go, I'd just like to give a couple of shout outs. Uh, one is for a young man called Andrew. Uh, been a subscriber for my channel for quite some time and uh, it looks like I've inspired him to make his own YouTube channel so if you guys want to go and check his channel out it's called Bad's Bike so yeah go and check him out he's working on his Suzuki Bandit I think it's a fire damage bike bad fire damage at the front somewhere but I think the other owners bought some parts and already fitted them so he's took over someone else's project with the looks of it and uh, there is another new channel that I've started watching and I've subscribed to because it's took me back to my uh, youth when I rebuilt my CB's Super Dream two of them uh, one blue and yellow and one black and gold you've probably seen photos in my backgrounds videos somewhere many many years ago when I was in my late twenties uh, so yeah this guy is doing a CB200 Super Dream and it's took me all the way back so I like watching his videos and he is called Ryan's Garage UK and I'll also leave a link in the description down below for that and also before we go I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's donated to my PayPal me account so yes thank you to everybody and I'll leave the list of names 
at the end of the video so thank you guys so there you go don't forget to leave a comment down below to give me some encouragement to make some more videos like this See you in another life, brother.